Hello, this is Greg Gallison with Product Papas, coming to you with a cautionary tale of Dodge Chrysler minivans across many makes and many models, perhaps all of them. I have found a systemic problem that exists in these. It occurs to the Dodge Caravans, the Chrysler Town and Countries, and it goes at least from 1998 to 2006 and probably beyond. So it's a cautionary tale, something to watch out for. So. Uh, if you like what I'm covering here, subscribe to my channel, bang the notification bell, and click all. And be sure to tell me in the comments what kind of products you like for me to talk about the most, because I'm covering things from construction products, tools, uh, and quite a wide range of things. Right now we're going to talk about cars. And uh, the reason I want to bring this up is because a lot of us buy these minivans. They're useful for uh, ca cargo, you know, simple cargo, quick vehicle, you know, all around, get around vehicle. They're useful for, um, you know, I take the seats out. Or if you want to carry a lot of people, you know, there's the soccer moms. But they got a problem. They got a problem. And that problem is with um, inter an intermittent electrical problem. I, after a period of time, they get the point that they will intermittently just not want to crank. Now, it occurred to me first with this green van, uh, and I've had three of these. This is my first of three vans that I've had in this series. Every one of them has had this problem. And this one was the first one it showed up in, and it's gotten worse to the point that it won't even run now because of it. And what that would happen with these is it would crank and run for a few seconds and then shut down. You'd crank it again and run for a few seconds and shut down the third time. It generally wouldn't crank, and then it wouldn't crank from there after. And you could walk away from it and come back an hour later, or it might have to be a day later, and it cranked right up. Now, I've taken them to shops several times, different shops. Some are supposed to be automotive electricians that knew what they were doing. None of them knew what they were doing. They would always tell you, well, it's a battery terminals. I fixed it, and, and it's good. Well, it wasn't good because the same problem would occur later. Now, at first, these problems will occur at a, more, at a lower frequency, but as they get older, the frequency of the currents gets higher. Well, uh, I didn't know what was going on with this one until I got my, you know, you can't jump it off. It ain't jumping it off. It's going to do any good. Uh, it's an it's a electrical tr control system problem, and I'm going to go into that here in just a second. When I got my second van, which I have wrecked and got totaled because a big transfer truck hit me in the rear end and knocked me into a light pole, uh, that van uh, was a newer van. It was a very well taken care of, low value, uh, mileage van. It was real pretty. It was like a luxury version of a town and country. This is my last town and country. It's not nearly as nice as the one that I wrecked. And... Uh, that uh, van started having that problem too, not as frequently as this one. That's when I thought, oh, there's something systemic about this. What could it be? And so I went on YouTube, and what I found out was this. They get a problem in their instrument panel. Greg, how can the instrument panel affect that? I'm going to show you. This part right here is the back side of this. It has a PC board in there that has logic that actually controls the startup of the vehicle. And it inhibits the running of it. So it might start, but it's going to inhibit it. And it is somehow connected to the alarm system. Now it is because it's got an, uh, an inhibit such that if the alarm goes off, the engine won't run so it won't be stolen. Well, the downside of that logic is that uh, it don't always set the alarm off. In fact, a lot of times it's failure. There's no alarm going off at all. It just, it just fails. So there's different parts of that circuit apparently. What happens is there's a PC board behind that instrument panel. The PC board is a multi-level board. It has, all, if you ever look in electronics, like, like what all the chips on your computer are mounted on, typically, that's called a PC board. And it's a multi-level board, and it has uh, conductors running different layers in it. You know, each layer has different layers of conductors with little through pins that connect each other. I've actually designed a PC board once upon a time, and uh, and had it built. So PC boards are pretty typical, and they. Uh, that's how electronics is based. Well, the problem is, with these cars, it may be having to do with running up and down the road for so many years, vibrations, or just the heat and cold cycles of, of life. Over time, those PC uh, uh, soldering joints get fractures in them. And they crack. And as they crack, uh, you have intermittent contact in the conductivity. And it sets off the, the logic. Now, see, the logic is typically, there's typically like a Boolean logic or AND gates or NAND gates that if this and that, this will happen or this will be inhibited or this will be enabled. So there's some little simple logic in there like that that is inhibiting the uh, running of the engine. Now, it's an intermittent problem. And you can have it uh, happen on a cold day, a hot day. Uh, it could be, it can just sit there and won't crank. 
You might come back an hour later, it might crank. It might be the next day. Usually the next day would always crank and run for me. But now, with this green van, just in the last uh, few weeks, it's got to the point that that alarm is on constantly. Now, it wasn't always being alarm on. With the gold van, I never got an alarm. It would just would not crank. Now, this van has just started. See, I got me a third van like this because I've always liked these vans for hauling things around. I clear out the back. So I got a flatbed truck for hauling big things. But if you're small, hauling small stuff or you need a cover because it's raining, these vans are really good. I mean, you know, it beats having, having a van and a flatbed truck. To me, beats having a truck with a camper shell on it you have to take on and off, which I had that at one time. I got the old camper shell over there, so I'm planning to make a, like a, a, a little utility hood out of one of these days. But I've been using it as a place to harden off vegetables under those trees there, little trees. So, uh, before I'd put them in from a greenhouse to out in the garden. So that's a whole nother topic. But uh, again, let me just show you. This van's got, got it too. This is a 2006. I had hoped, being a later model, that that wouldn't happen. Because my other two vans were both 98s, so although one was apparently driven by an old couple and driven very little. And it was more of the luxury type, and it was very good shape. See, it's right in here, guys. Right in here, behind this instrument panel. You got a problem here. Right behind this instrument panel is those PC boards. Now, this is a different layout of an instrument panel than the other one, so they've redesigned it. But they got the same cotton pick and stinking problem. Now, you buy a new van, it's going to be all right for a while. And it's probably going to get worse over time. But know this, if you're planning to buy one of these and drive it for a long time, this problem is probably going to happen to you. Now, I can't say that it will or will not happen for the newest ones. Maybe they fixed it. But also, maybe they have it and you won't know for a while. So if you're buying or out in the market for a minivan, uh, this could be a problem. And it may be a problem with other vehicles uh, that are Chrysler. Because these are the only Chryslers I have. So it could be across all the Chrysler fleet. Chrysler, Plymouth, Dodge, uh, and it, it could also include Jeeps. So one time Jeep was a Chrysler product. It could include other makes and models too, other vehicles outside of the Chrysler family. I just know I've ran into it with this family of cars. And so if you're out in the market buying an older one especially, be aware that this could happen. Be aware that uh, you could have a problem that would uh, give you, put you in a point where your vehicles won't crank. A lot of traffic running around here. Anyway, that's the, uh, somebody's on a vehicle the cranks, right? <laughs> so, just again, uh, I've got a flatbed truck here. We're carrying a really big one, a black truck. <laughs> so I got two flatbeds. And I've got this one right here that I've got a load of styrofoam on right now. Just to show you. I couldn't carry this in the van. I couldn't even drive. I, don't, I wouldn't even have a short bed pickup truck, guys. I like a, a truck that I can carry a load in. <laughs> now, this was a real chintzy load to carry because this metal pull between all, both sides of this plywood. It's slick as heck, and these blow easy with the wind. It doesn't take much of wind to blow plywood everywhere. So I put some 2 4s on top for weight, tied it down, and drove very slow. I made it home. I was, I was worried about this load. <laughs> but notice I don't have it any higher than the cab either and just wear it behind the cab to uh, reduce wind effects upon it. Anyway, so there we go guys. Again, subscribe to the channel. Oh yeah, check out my links below to support, uh, support the channel. I got some, uh, I do have some uh, special uh, uh, <laughs> uh, affiliate marketing deals with Tractor Supply, True Leaf Market, my Patriot Supply and others. So check out my links below, below to help my channel and thank you for watching. One thing about these instrument panels is that you can fix them yourself. Now to do that, there's different options. You can take them out, and if you know how to solder them, you can solder them. Now there's certain skill sets involved. It takes skills to take one out and put it back in, because you know this is you know dash panels are kind of aggravating to deal with, and uh, you know you can solder if you have the skills to do that. Now maybe you don't have the skills to do that. So what you want to consider in that case is uh, <clears throat> having it replaced or having somebody else solder it for you or even having somebody else take it in and out well here's the thing if you have if you're going to have it removed it might cost you five hundred dollars in labor just to switch it up maybe more depending on where you go you might find somebody to do it for you cheap uh soldering of course if you can do that then you know if you can do the whole job you know you're not gonna be out much money just time but uh you can get used instrument panels for around, I've seen them for about $150 on eBay, but why buy a used one? It's probably got the same problem. 
Probably every one of them does. So every one I've seen had that problem now. <laughs> so consider this. You might buy a new one, but a new one's going to be very expensive. I just tried to price them for my 98 Dodge Caravan, Ram Caravan, and I went to AutoZone, and I went to uh, Advanced Auto Parts, and neither one carry that model anymore. Now, they might carry the one for this uh, 2006, uh, but, you know, I went on eBay, and I found them for $999, so for $1,000 plus replacement, so you might be out $1,500. I mean, you know, these vans really aren't worth that much money, unless it's worth it to you. So, it's up to you what approach to do. Maybe you just don't want to deal with them. Maybe it might be best just to stay away from these vans, but if you've already got one, or if you can get one cheap and, if, and, and you think it's worth the trouble, you can fix it. it can, I mean, it's doable. It's just you need to know what you're dealing with. So with all that said, um, it's doable, but do you want to deal with it? That's the question. And that's my warning on these vans is they're going to give you this problem. And so may a lot of other vehicles too. You know, reliability is inversely proportional to parts count. The more parts we put on, the more sophisticated we make these vehicles, the more problems you're going to have them, especially when they get old. It might be nice when they're new. But when they get old, you got problems. <laughs> There's nothing like my old 76 truck. You don't have much complication to it. <laughs> anyway, thank y'all for watching.